very vehement. You know, what exactly did she say? That there was no way that she would have another test. And she also made it very clear that she doesn't want me for her doctor. She intends to go back to Dr. Haynes. I was afraid so. Listen, Scotty, I thought you should know since it was your idea in the first place for Bobby to come and see me. Gina, listen, do you really think that the lab could have mixed up those tests? Yes, I do, Scotty. Yeah, but Bobby's doctor told me that she was pregnant and your first test came back positive. Look, labs are run by human beings and human beings make mistakes. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. And I think Bobby should definitely have a second test. If you can just get her to agree to it. Listen, I've got to see Leslie Weber, and I'll get back to you right away, okay? Sure, Scotty. I'll be here all day. But I might be going to New York with Gary for the weekend. No, no, I won't be very long. Bye, Anne. Hey, Goodbye. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you, It's Dr. all right. Weber. What is it? Well, it's just that everything is happening so fast now, I need your advice on what to do next. walking you from school, Mr. Higgins. It was my pleasure, Laura. Will, aren't you going to come across the street to the hospital and check with Dr. Taylor about my progress? No. That isn't why I stopped by the school, either. I knew you were in the middle of your exams. I just wanted to wish you luck and see how they were going. Oh, that, that's very nice of you. So what exam did you write today? Um, history. How do you think you did? I, I think I did pretty well, but, um... Well, history's always been one of my good subjects. Tomorrow's solid geometry. That's that's going to be a rough one. And uh, the next day's chemistry, which is going to be even worse. Well, I'm sure that uh, Scotty's coached you pretty thoroughly, hasn't he? Look, I'm curious about something, Laura. What? Why haven't you wanted to talk about Scotty today? I don't know what you mean. Look, every time I've mentioned his name, you've changed the subject or didn't answer at all. Mr. Higgins, all I can think about these days are my exams. Laura, I may not be as square as you think. What? Look, I can tell how you and Scotty feel about each other. I just hope that this time you won't let things go too far until you're ready to handle them. What's that supposed to mean? Well, just that. No offense intended. Maybe not. But I think what you really mean is that you hope I won't start sleeping with Scotty because of what happened to David Hamilton. Now, you're wrong, Laura. Now, you want to know what I see when I look at you? What? A bright, sensitive girl who's doing a very good job of working her way back from a nightmare. Now, as for Scotty, I, I, I like him a lot, too. You do? Yes. And I'd certainly never equate him with David Hamilton. Now, Scotty's a fine young man, and, and above all, he's, he's, he's honest. David Hamilton was a crook and an opportunist. Totally dishonest in all his dealings. Now, this may come as a surprise to you, Laura, but I wholeheartedly approve of your relationship with Scotty. Why do you approve of it? Nobody else seems to. Because I think turning to Scotty at this time of your life, when you're most vulnerable, is a very good sign. Of what? Of your ability to trust again. And your good sense to give your trust to someone completely deserving of it. Someone who'll never betray or disillusion you. Um, I have to go to the hospital now. So, Laura, did, did I say something wrong? No. I don't want to be late for my appointment with Dr. Taylor. Oh, I, I still think my first instinct was right. What was that, Leslie? That Bobby has been lying about being pregnant to trap Scotty into marrying her. Yeah, but what about those two positive test results? Isn't it possible that Bobby switched the labels on two tests herself? Yeah, but who would she have known who to switch with? Gina, did Bobby see Mrs. Davenport at all the day that you first tested them both? As a matter of fact, she was talking to Louise Davenport when she first came in. Did Bobby know that she was pregnant? She may have overheard her tell me she thought she was. But that's it, don't you see? That must be what happened. Bobby heard Mrs. Davenport say that she thought she was pregnant. And then when you did her test, immediately following Mrs. Davenport, she got the idea and had the opportunity to switch the two tests. That would explain everything, Gina, don't you see? It would even explain why the first Davenport test came back negative and the second one was positive. When do you think she would have had a chance to change those labels, though? Was there any time that these tests were left unattended? Well... As a matter of fact, 
right after Bobby was examined, I was called to Heather's room to check her. And the tests were here, waiting for the lab to pick them up. But Bobby walked out of the office with me. She could have come back. She could have come back after you left. Listen, Dr. Weber, I appreciate everything you're doing. Well, what about Dr. Haynes, though? He definitely told me that she was pregnant. Who is Dr. Haynes? What do we even know about him? Gina, have you ever heard of the Dr. Haynes? No, I haven't, Leslie. Yeah, well, all we really do know is that it was her family doctor since she was a kid. Uh, forgive me, Scotty. I'm sorry. At this point, I do not believe anything that Bobby says unless it is checked out to my satisfaction. Yeah. yeah well, how are we going to check something like that out? There is a way, but we may need your help. <laughs> Name it. Okay. Bobby told you flat out she's not going to have another pregnancy test, right? Right. You have to change your mind. You have to insist that she has another test. Oh, well, I'll force her into that. And this second test is, is the only way that I'm going to prove whether or not whether I have to marry her or not. And I'm still a little bit curious about our Dr. Haynes. I wonder if he really was her family doctor since she was a child, or if he's just a man who happens to make a good living out of being cooperative for a price. I think I'm going to check on that. Again, I'm going to do some persuading myself. Even so, I still feel cheated. I don't get to give my little sister away. I just want to get Scotty out of poor Charles as soon as possible. If it were up to me, Luke, it would have gone tonight. Yeah, where is the blushing bridegroom anyway? Probably trying to get dear little Laura to talk to him. Do you believe he actually wanted to wait till tomorrow to leave so that he could go to his classes? <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, well, how'd you talk him out of it? <laughs> I badgered him till he gave in. Oh. Luke, I can't wait around for Gina Dante to get back that negative report on Mrs. Davenport. She might suspect that the test got mixed up and then she might trace it back to me. Ah, uh, dear Mrs. Davenport. Oh, I wish I could see her face when that test result comes back and says that she is not pregnant. She was so sure of herself. Look, that's not funny. I just want to make sure that Scotty and I are safely up in Canada by that time and that he's already said I do. Dory, where's Jessie? Uh, she's up on the third floor. I just relieved her. Have you seen Scotty? Uh, no. No, I haven't. Well, I am getting sick and tired of waiting around here for him. Bobby, what, weren't you supposed to be on your way to getting married? Yeah, Dory, we're supposed to be, and then everything got postponed because Scotty's father got sick, and naturally Scotty didn't want to leave until he found out everything was all right. Uh, sorry to hear that Mr. Baldwin's ill. Dr. Hardy's got him up in isolation. But I hope it isn't anything serious. Whatever it is, I hope they find out soon so the two of us can take off tonight. Bobby. Scotty, hi. How's your father? They're not sure. Come here. There's something I want to talk to you about. What? Hi, Dory. Don't do this to me and 